Good morning. So you guys awake this morning? Would you stand with me as we read from the uh, Gospel of Luke, chapter 2, 25 through 35. So this is where we're going to be kind of meditating on this morning. It says this. It says, now there was a man in Jerusalem called Simeon who was righteous and devout. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. It had been revealed to him by the Spirit that he would not die before he seen the Lord's Messiah. Moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple courts. And when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what the custom of the law required, Simeon took him in his arms and praising God, <laughs> says the sovereign Lord, you have promised you may now dismiss your servant in peace as you have promised. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all the nations, a light of revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. The child's father and mother marveled at what was said about him. And then Simon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, this child is destined to cause the falling and the rising of many in Israel. Think about that. This child is destined to cause the falling and the rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be spoken against so that the thoughts of many's hearts will be revealed. And mom, Mary, a sword will pierce your own soul too. How's that for a prophecy? Father, we come before you this morning in the name of your son, Jesus. <laughs> Lord, we've left our homes to come to this house of the Lord to this assembly, this gathering of believers. We come with purpose this morning, Father. We come to worship you in spirit and truth. We come to learn and understand. We pray, Lord God, that you would send your spirit upon us this morning. Help us, Jesus, that we might hear again the spirit of the living God. Help us to see what it is you want us to see in our lives, Lord. We commit this time here unto you. And we praise you, God, for this morning that you have made and this morning that we get to worship freely in spirit and in truth. So, Lord, we just honor you now and thank you for this time we have together. We pray this in the name of Jesus. And all those who love Jesus would say, amen. amen. And you all may be seated. And I, I don't know about you. I'm still in the afterglow of last night. So last night was pretty amazing. Our uh, uh, Christmas tree lighting we, we did the first time we did the tree lighting inside in the uh, foyer area. Man, that's a natural acoustic in there. It sounded so good, right? And then we came in here and we had a Christmas uh, uh, concert, you could say, the children's choir and the adult choir, and it was amazing. And then afterwards, we had a blast uh, with a Christmas party. And so yesterday was the way to kick off the Christmas season. I'm still kind of in, I'm kind of, I'm in the afterglow of that, aren't you? For those of you that were here, it was just amazing. And once again, can we just thank those that were uh, worshiping last week? The choir in Ferdinand was amazing. I'm telling you, these guys, our children's choir rocked. It was pretty cool. So as you can tell, by the way, so we've been doing some stuff. So um, as you know, we're in the process of upgrading our sanctuary. And um, so we got the new, those are the new drapes. Uh, so we're going to get the curtain rods that'll open and close those in time. And we have a stained glass window that's behind that black part, but it's all in progress. We've got all new lighting coming in still. The, the speakers are going to be brought down this next week. We're in the process of figuring it out. So thank you for your patience with us um, as we're in the process of doing some upgrades. And I'm um, just trying to, some person said, well, the LED wall looks kind of cool, doesn't it? I, I, I think it's pretty rad. Uh, someone said, Pastor Frank, we're coming into the 21st century. I said, yeah, we're, we're just pacing ourselves, you know? So it's all cool. It's all cool. So, um, <laughs> so Pastor Frank, um, Cindy and I, uh, our, the our, when we had a daughter, we were going to call her Sarah. We had the name all set. 
Do you know what in Hebrew what the word Sarah means? Princess. First child, boy, Jonathan. Next child, boy, Jordan. Okay, here. Next child, boy, Jeremiah. And then we quit. <laughs> but whenever I see, I, I, I've always... <laughs> So a few years ago, I'm in, um, we're in, I was leading a, a group in the land of Jesus. We're in Jerusalem. We're toward the end of our tour. And uh, it, was, it was Sabbath, Shabbat Shalom, right? And, and we were in a hotel in Jerusalem, and we were going down to dinner. I remember this. And in the elevator was this cute little girl, guys. I mean, just adorable. She was probably two, maybe, all dressed up in Shabbat clothes. You know what I'm saying? So in the Jewish culture, uh, you know, really special. And obviously this family is in Jerusalem. And this little, and in the elevator, I'm just, you know, her kind of, and she, I just can, I just see these little girls. I just wish I had one, you know? And after, and I started talking with her. And once the door opens and I'm just sitting down and I'm like, you just look so pretty. I love your dress. And she's smiling at me and stuff. And and her, her parents are like looking at me and they go, oh, you speak English, you're American. I said, yeah. And, uh, and you know, we're talking about the little girl and they said, so uh, why are you here, Jerusalem? And I, I told him, I'm here with a group of people. We're uh, studying the life of the rabbi from Nazareth. I don't say Christian. You know that, right? To a Jew, they, they think Adolf Hitler's a Christian. You know, like uh, Madonna wears a cross. She's a Christian. I don't think she is, FYI. Um, so I, I, there's wording that I, I, I use rabbi from Nazareth. I'll use I'm a messianic Gentile. I say I'm a, I'm a Gentile who believes in a Jewish Messiah. You know, and they, when I said I'm, we're, I'm here, we're, we're studying the life of the rabbi from Nazareth, I got the look from the dad. It was confusion. Like, huh, wait, a rabbi from Nazareth. And then he went, oh, and, and it dawned on him, you know? And, and it was kind of that look. It's that look. It's that look. Um, the, the Jewish people have a very hard time with Jesus. On one hand, especially those in Israel, they love him because he's great for uh, tourism and the prosperity of the Israeli economy. A lot of us Messianic Gentiles come to Israel. And so th it's funny when you talk to him, he, he's kind of like, I'm really glad you're here, but I really struggle with this rabbi from Nazareth, right? Uh, um, it's, it, when you talk, just recently I was talking with a, a, a Jewish man, um, and we were talking about Jesus. And I, I said, you know, he's the most famous Jew that ever lived. And this re religious Jew looks at me, and it's always that sigh and that contemplation and he nodded his head that's true he is the most famous Jew that's ever lived he's the most um, influential Jew that's ever lived and he's the most controversial Jew that's ever lived Jesus um, last week um, we did a baby dedication up here, and little Mia, oh my gosh, adorable. As we were doing uh, this baby dedication, it's biblical, people. Jesus was baby dedicated. When Jesus was eight, Mary and Joseph is down in Bethlehem, and it's not that far of a journey. They, If we're going to dedicate our child, they went to the temple in Jerusalem, and they brought Jesus to get dedicated uh, eight days afterwards and so forth. And, but something really amazing happened as Mary and Joseph are going up to be, uh, dedicate baby Jesus at the temple in obscurity, right? Um, all of a sudden, something really crazy happens at Jesus' baby dedication. And we just read it, didn't we? As they're walking up with the baby Jesus... There's this righteous dude who beelines it for Mary and Joseph. And I don't know how he scoops up the baby Jesus, but he does. I'm sure probably he had to ask Joseph first. I bet Joseph's going, wait, what? Okay, you know. And he scoops up the baby Jesus and he starts praising God 
Because God somehow had promised Simeon that before he died, he would see the Lord's Messiah. And this guy is so in tune with the Holy Spirit, he knows, he's, he comes over to the baby Jesus, he scoops up the baby Jesus, and he starts praising God, saying, now I can die because God has fulfilled his promise to me that I will see the baby Jesus. I will see the Messiah before I die, right? And then what's really cool is he begins prophesying over the baby Jesus. Could you imagine if this happened uh, yes, last Sunday with Mia? That would have been weird, right? Someone scoop prophesy. I mean, picture this. He begins prophesying. He's, he's, so, he's here. It's like Simeon's, he's here. I'm holy, he's here, right? He's here. I'm, he's holding. You guys, he's beholding salvation embodied in a person, in a baby. I mean, he's totally overtaken, but he, then he begins prophesying. And as he begins prophesying, he begins saying some very interesting things about the baby Jesus, who he's holding in his arms. It says this in Luke 2, 29 through 30, sovereign Lord, man, that means God's in charge. God can do what he wants, when he wants, whenever he wants, however he wants, without asking you first. He's sovereign. He's God. He knows what he's doing. Sovereign Lord, the creator of heaven and earth, right? As you have promised, you may now dismiss your servant in peace. It's like God's like, I promise I'll show you the Messiah before you die. For my eyes has seen your God's salvation, right? So, so, at the baby dedication, there's a prophecy made about Jesus. And if you're going to take notes with me, this is a great note to take. Note number one, kind of write this one down if you want to. It says, uh, at, at Jesus' baby dedication, it was prophesied that he will bring salvation to the world. Wow. For a little baby, this little one's bringing salvation to the people of the world. Write that down. And by the way, this is the exact same message that the angel had told Joseph. When Joseph found out that Mary's pregnant, he's like, this isn't good. And God sends an angel, and he's speaking to Joseph. He says, Joseph, what's happening with your wife is totally of God. Be cool with it. And the angel reveals to Joseph that, um, that this baby will take away the sins of, of God's people. So when Joseph hears this, he says, yeah, that's what the angel told me. Apparently, the same... God that's speaking to me, Joseph's thinking, he's speaking to Simeon. He, the salvation, right? And by the way, this was prophesied of old. This is not something new. This was in the Old Testament. You read Isaiah 53. It says that the Messiah will take away the sins of God's people, right? And yet, and so he prophesies as he's holding this baby, the embodiment of salvation wrapped in a child. And Simeon's holding Jesus, and he says, I'm beholding the salvation, Right? That is so awesome. Do I, do I hear an amen? That's awesome. Don't you wish you could imagine holding salvation, embodiment, right? Oh, here he is. God's salvation in flesh. That's amazing. Luke 2, 29 through 32. Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you may now dismiss your servant in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation which you have prepared in the sight of all nations, a light. And so here's, the, here's prophecy of, over this baby Jesus. This baby Jesus is a light for revelation to the Gentiles. And the glory, this baby, is the glory of your people, Israel. Did you catch that? He's a light of revelation to the Gentiles, and he's the glory of the people of Israel. That's not bad for a baby dedication, right? So take note, note number two, write this down. At Jesus' baby dedication, it was prophesied that he will bring revelation to the lost. Okay, I'm, I put it that way. Revelation to the lost and the glory to Israel. A Gentile in the eyes of a Jew 2,000 years ago was a lost person, a non-Jew, a non a uh, person of God's covenant, a non-child of Abraham, a person that's just lost. See, Okay, so here we go. Ready? How many people in here are not Jewish? Raise your hands. Raise your hands. See, here's the deal. Our ancestor is Cornelius in Acts chapter 10, a Roman centurion 
who was a God-fearer, who began reading, and he became a believer in the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and Joseph, Moses, and the prophets. Cornelius was a Gentile who was called a God-fearer, and he was the first one to accept Yeshua, or Jesus, as the Messiah. He's our ancestor. And by the way, when you read Acts 10, all the Jewish people that watched the Holy Spirit fall on a non-Jew were shocked They had no idea that Messiah could be for a non-Jew. As Rabbi Feldman says, Jesus, my Jesus, is for you people too. That's good theology. Messiah comes first to the Jew and then to the Gentile, you see. And and this was prophesied at Jesus' birth. And and it's so cool. So we've been talking about... um, um, when someone is in tune with the Holy Spirit, the, the spirit of truth always works with the word of truth. And, and all the commentaries say that when Simeon was, was prophesying over Jesus, he had Isaiah 49, 6 in his mind. That, that as Simeon knew what the prophet Isaiah had said 700 years ago about the servant of Messiah coming, the servant of God coming. And now, 700 years before Jesus was born, this is what it says in Isaiah 49, 6. It says, uh, it is too small a thing for you to be my servant to restore the tribe of Jacob. The servant is going to restore the tribes of Jacob and bring back those of Israel that have kept that I have kept, but it's the, the Messiah is not just for the Jew. I will also make you, Messiah, a light to the Gentiles. Hi, that's me. That, that my salvation may reach to the ends of the earth. Did y'all get that? Not just Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaria, but to the ends of the earth. This is the prophecy of Messiah. That, and, and I love the banners because it's, it's all over the Bible if you see it. In, in Genesis, in the first books, when God starts his nation through Abraham, he promises that through Abraham, his seed will, will bless all the nations or all the families of the earth. And that seed is Messiah. It's in Genesis. In the book of Revelation, it speaks of the seed of Messiah that, with, uh, that he purchases for God persons from every tribe, language, and na- people, and nation. You've made us all to be kingdom and priests to serve our God. Jesus is not just for the Jewish people. He's also for the non-Jewish. It's the universal salvation of Messiah. This is not bad for a prophecy of a baby in Jerusalem. Do I hear an amen? That's not bad. And you think Mary and Joseph are going, whoo. Man, I'm glad I came up here today to Jerusalem, right? So note number three, you wrote this down. He will be a sign Uh, Or note number two, he will bring revelation to the lost and glory to Israel. That's not bad. This is good stuff, right? That's amazing. But listen, hmm, the prophecy goes on. The child's father and mother marveled at what was said. Amen. They're probably going, this is awesome. Then Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, hmm, this child is destined to cause the falling, hmm, and the rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign. Did you know that that Jesus is a sign? A sign? And to be a sign that will be spoken against. Why would you speak against God's sign? Is that a good question? Note number three, write this down. At Jesus' baby dedication, it was prophesied that he will be a sign that causes division among the Jewish people. That's not bad. The falling and rising of many in Israel. The the, the prophecy says that this baby is a sign from God, but the sign's going to be spoken against by his own people. This is when he's a baby. What does that mean? It was prophesied at Jesus' birth that the Jewish people will have a problem with the Jewish Messiah. Do they? Ask them. Messianic Jews are amazing people. Uh, Jews, a Messianic Jew is a Jewish person that believes that Messiah has come. 
And there's a group of them here that hang out here on Saturday. Rabbi Feldman is just rad. He's just this amazing, um, he was a, raised in Orthodox Judaism who began reading the Old Testament. Very dangerous. If you begin reading the Bible, you're going to come to faith. Uh, and he slowly one day woke up and said, oh my goodness, Jesus is the Messiah. He was shocked, just like me as a Gentile searching. <laughs> The Messianic Jewish people are, are, are they're, they're, they've risen. They've risen, you know? The Messiah's risen. And yet he causes the falling of many. They struggle with this. The, the, the Jewish people will struggle with the Jewish Messiah. And it was prophesied as Jesus was a baby. And by the way, this isn't just a prophecy that Simeon has said. This was written in the Old Testament, too, when you read Isaiah 53. And it's a great text. It's the text that Rabbi Feldman came to faith in. It's the great text that Pastor Frank came to faith in. When you read the 53rd chapter of Isaiah, it talks about the suffering servant who was uh, crushed and pierced and despised, rejected, and uh, this righteous one, my servant, takes away the iniquities of my people. His grave was assigned with rich men, and yet in a, in a, or, or with wicked men, but in a rich man's... T- I mean, it's, you read Isaiah 53, it's like 700 years later, Jesus fulfills this perfectly in one day. It's intellectually, you can't get around it. But this is what it says in Isaiah 53. Isaiah 53 Verse 3 says, he was despised, so the Messiah will be despised and forsaken of men. Which men? His people. A man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, like one from whom men hid their face. They scourged, flogged, they destroyed the body of Jesus, right? He was despised, and the prophecy says, we did not esteem him. We who? His people watched as the, as the, 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 the Jewish Messiah was destroyed. The people watched. He was, de- he was rejected. Now, that's an, that, how's that for a prophecy for a baby? That's not bad, right? He's a savior. He's a light to the Gentiles. He's the glory of Israel. He's a sign that's going to cause division among God's own people. And it all came to pass... Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. What is it what is it about Jesus that's a stumbling block to his own Jewish people? Elevator, Jerusalem. What is it about Jesus? That's a stumbling block to the Jewish people. Do you know? If you talk with them, they have a problem with his identity. They have a problem with him claiming to be God. They have a problem with Jesus claiming to be the son of God. They have a problem with his identity. And, it, and it's not if you ask a Jewish person now, what is it about Jesus? He's a Jew just like you. He's a religious Jew. What is it you don't like about, ah, oh, you know, when you, when you get to it d- down deep, they don't like his claim. And by the way, they, if they don't like it now, they hated it back then. Uh, Jesus is in uh, Jerusalem in the fifth chapter of John, and he's engaging with the religious leaders. And uh, you know, they're like wanting to kill him. You know, for what sign do you want to kill me for? Uh, and in and, and John 5, 8, uh, it says this, for this reason, they tried all the more to kill him. Not only was he breaking the Sabbath, but he was even calling God his father, making himself equal with God. They didn't like it. They didn't like it. He's a rabbi from Nazareth. Okay, They'll, you'll get a nod. The rabbi from Nazareth, you'll get a nod. Uh, he's a religious reformer. Jesus of Nazareth, oh, yes, okay. Uh, he was a moral, a good moral teacher. They, you'll get a little pause, and they might nod their head about uh, on that. But he's deity. No, he is not deity. It, it, he is not deity. 
Note number four, one of the problems that Jewish people have with Jesus is his claim of deity, right? The prophecy is, is that this child will cause the rising and the falling of many in Israel and to be a sign that's going to be spoken against. What is it about him that you speak against him? Well, what, one of them is his identity. It's not all that they have a problem with. One of them is, is his identity of deity. And FYI, would you have a problem with a person if they claim to be God? If you went to lunch today, and there was a person out in front of the restaurant claiming to be God, how many people in here would have a problem with that? You should. But Jesus isn't just any ordinary person, is he? Jesus is the one that's walking on water and raising the dead. Jesus is the prophesied one. When the Bible says that the Messiah will be born in Bethlehem and it just so happens Jesus is born in, how did that happen? He's, he's not, Jesus is no ordinary human being. See, what if his identity of deity was prophesied long before he came, but long before he was born? Should then you have a problem with that? Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. What if the sign, the Messiah, it was prophesied that he would be deity? Should you still have a problem then with his identity? Answer? Isaiah, 700 years for Jesus was born. Isaiah 7, 14. Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. Here you go. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel. Good old New Testament. Matthew, the tax collector, speaks in his gospel Matthew 1, 21 through 23, she will give birth to a son and you are to give him the name Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said to the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and they will call him Emmanuel and good old Matthew gives the translation which means God with us, God with us. Emmanuel means God ear with us, God with us. Why is it so hard to believe that the Messiah is deity if the prophecies say he will be deity? What does it say two chapters later? Not chapter Isaiah 7. What does it say in Isaiah 9? For a child is born to us, and a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor. The child will be called Mighty God, deity. According to Isaiah 9, What is the identity of the prophesied child? Anyone? Deity, right? See, this is one of the stumbling blocks. This is, this was a stumbling block 2,000 years ago. How dare you call God Father? Jesus, what what good deed have I done that you want to kill me? We're going to kill you good deeds, but you make yourself to be the son of God. God's your father. That means you're his son. How dare you kill him? Hmm. Jesus is a sign given to humanity. (laughs) The prophecy is, is that the Messiah, when he comes, his own people are going to struggle with the sign that God sent. Hmm. Has anyone ever had your, their, have have you ever had your neighbor hit your car? Well, we have a neighbor two doors down to the left side. One day I walked out, and uh, their son hit my son's car, Jordan's car, white Mustang. Um, so uh, we began. I've, I've known this family for a long time. They live on the street, a wonderful Jewish family that lives on our street. Um, 
You know, they have a Hanukkah candles. I love that. I love Hanukkah. Jesus celebrated Hanukkah. Someday we'll talk about that. Um, So we enter into insurance companies. Isn't that fun? Do you guys like dealing with insurance companies once your car's hit? Isn't that wonderful? And, uh, you know, uh, deductibles and (laughs) all this stuff. And and as we're entering into this, uh, I become very acquainted with our family down the street, you know. And as finally after the insurance companies are fixed in his car and I'm over at their house and and there's dad, there's mom, there's their son. And, uh, you know, and they... You know, hey, you know, sorry this happened, no problem, it happens. Hey, you know, son, you're learning to drive, it's okay, type thing, you know. And so they're like, so you're a pastor. Yeah, you are, yeah, yeah uh-huh. They said, so, uh, churches in Irvine, this and this and this. They said, so, so you guys believe that Jesus is the son of God? And I answered, Yes. They, they kind of smile and laugh. And the dad says, God has no son. Are you, are, are you sure? I said, do, do you guys have, it's, it, they don't, so we, we Christians call it a New Testament and an Old Testament. The Jewish people call it the Torah and the Hof Torah. I said, do you have a Hof Torah here? The son, their son that hit my, yes. I said, would you go get the Psalms? He looked at me, he says, okay. And he just had, he ran up and got his Haftorah. And he got, I said, read Psalm 2. I guess, have you ever read Psalm 2? And their son began reading Psalm 2. Psalm 2 is written by King David a thousand years before Jesus was born. And I don't know how else to do this, but just he read this out loud. So I'm going to read it out loud. Have you ever read Psalm 2? It's a prophecy of the last days. It says, Why do the nations conspire and the people plot in vain? The kings of the earth rise up and the rulers band together against the Lord and against his anointed. Does anyone know what the Hebrew word for anointed is? Messiah. Messiah. Anointed. So, Their son begins reading this. The kings of the earth rise up and the rulers band together against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, let us break their chains and throw off their shackles. The one enthroned in heaven laughs. The Lord scoffs at them. Then he rebukes them in his anger and terrifies them with his wrath, saying, I have installed my king. That's the anointed one. I have installed my king on Zion, my holy mountain, and I will proclaim the Lord's decree. He said to me, you are my son. Today I have become your father. Ask me and I will make the nations your inheritance, the ends of the earth your possession. You will break them with a rod of iron and you will dash them to pieces like pottery. Therefore, you kings, be wise. Be warned, O rulers of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and celebrate his rule with trembling. Kiss his son. Or he will be angry with you. He will be angry and your ways will lead to your destruction. For his wrath can flare up in a moment. Blessed are all those who take refuge in him. The son reads this perfectly, what I just read to you. When his son finished reading it, they were quiet. And I broke the silence by saying, do you see it? They were silent. This is one of the passages that we Christians understand, understanding that Messiah is the Son of God. Can you see how we get this? The dad said nothing. Big, beautiful Jewish man with his beard. He said, and his only words to me was this, and I wrote them down. We will need, he said, we will need to look more into this. And they've never spoken to me again. (laughs) I wave. As I was walking back from their house, 
I thought of Jesus' baby dedication in Jerusalem 2,000 years ago when Simeon scooped him up and said, this is the salvation of mankind embodied, and this one will cause the rising and the falling of many in Israel, and that this little baby is a sign given by God through which God's own people are going to struggle with. God said they would. They struggle, okay, there are many things that the Jewish people struggle with with Messiah. One, they they struggle with his claims of deity. So I thought you might want to know that this morning. They they, they struggle with he didn't set up a political kingdom, but uh, he's coming again, and that one's coming. Um, So he's not God's son. God doesn't have a son. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. And his name's Jesus of Nazareth. His mom's Mary, and his stepdad is Joseph. Take notes of me this morning. Here's a great note. Look, this, check these out. The scriptures calls Jesus deity in Psalm 2. Isaiah 7, 14, Isaiah 9, 6, John 1, 1, John 1, 18, John 20, 28 through 29, Hebrews 1, 8, Romans 9, 5, Titus 2, 13, 2 Peter 1, 1, Isaiah 53, the whole chapter, and on, and on, and on, and on, and on. That's not, that's just some of them. <laughs> so at, at Jesus' baby dedication in Jerusalem, this, this, this man came and scooped Jesus up, and he started just saying, thank you, God, he's here. And he started saying, okay, Lord, now you can let me die in peace because I've totally seen your promise fulfilled. I am beholding the Messiah. I'm beholding the, the Savior. He called him Savior. And he, it's Isaiah 46. Uh, Savior, not just to the Jewish people, but to the Gentile people, right? He picks him up. He scoops him up. He says that that this baby is going to be a revelation to the world, an illumination. Um, He scoops him up, and he says, ah, this baby's going to cause some problems within God's own people. They're going to struggle with him. Um, They're going to speak against this sign. They're going to struggle with him. What's the purpose of a sign? Does anyone know what a stop sign? How many people went to went, stopped at a stop sign this morning? The chief of police wanted me to ask you all if you planned on stopping at stop signs this morning. <laughs> Michael Kent, good guy, our new chief. Uh, here, picture of a sign, right? So, what's the purpose of a sign? Signs are designed to do what? To communicate, yes? Yes? Signs are given to communicate. They're important. See, God has given you and God has given me a sign. Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will be with child, and you will call him Emmanuel. It's a sign. What is the purpose of a sign? Signs are given to communicate. God wants to communicate to you, and God wants to communicate with me today through Jesus, the virgin birth Jesus, born in Bethlehem, raised in Nazareth, the one who walks on water and raises the dead, the one who went to Jerusalem and hung on a cross, Isaiah 53, 
rose from the dead, ascended into heaven, and coming back again. Jesus, God has sent you a sign. God wants to communicate to you through this sign, Jesus. What do you think God wants to communicate to you? Well, as an atheist, (laughs) it communicated to me that God exists. I want to write that down. Note six, Jesus is a sign that God is real. God isn't somebody you create in your own imagination. We don't create God. I think God's like this. I talk to people all the time and say, I'm spiritual too. Oh, no, here it comes. I I, I think God, I see, and they begin creating God in their own image right before me. That's the first commandment. Don't do that, right? We don't create God. We discover God. He's out there. Seek, ask, knock. He will manifest himself to you. You don't create God. I think God's like this. I like, I mean, it's like God's some smorgasbord that we get to create God. People do this all the time. And Moses said, don't do it. It's the first commandment. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. We are really good at creating gods in our own image. And yet we are made in his. Do you understand? So the sign to, is, is an intellectual thing. The purpose of a sign, God wants you to know that he's real and he's here. Jesus is a real human being that walked on planet Earth. He was really born in Bethlehem and he was really raised in Nazareth. He really had a mom and a dad, but yet he was the prophesied one. The most influential Jew in human history, the most famous Jew in human history, and the most controversial Jewish person that ever walked on planet Earth. All, and Simeon said, this is what's coming. God is real, people. He's here. God is real. What does God want to communicate to you and me with the sign, baby Jesus? Write this one down. Jesus is a sign that God personally cares Pastor Frank, does God even care about me? Pastor Frank, I, I, all this pain and suffering I'm going through, does God just look up in heaven and laugh at me and all my pain and suffering? Pastor Frank, is God some creator that just wound up the world that we're living in like a clock and walk away and he doesn't care about me anymore? Tears? Does God even care my pain. For God so loves the world that he gave his only begotten son. When Messiah comes, he's called the suffering servant. He comes and suffers on this planet. Have you guys suffered on this planet yet? Have you figured out this place is a pretty tough place to live on? This is, this is a broken, fallen world, and we live amongst broken, fallen people. We live amongst a planet that was made, and it was said it was good, but just like a painting that has been painted, and it's fresh, it's like somebody wipes it. It's been marred. You've been marred in sin. You can still see the image of God on your life and mine, but we've been marred. We're messed up. We're broken. God enters a broken world, and he ends up suffering alongside of us. This is the message. He cares. God with us. Jesus is a sign to you. Jesus is a sign to me. Signs are designed to communicate. What does God want to communicate through the sign of the baby Jesus to your life and to mine? First of all, he's totally real. God is here. It's it's an intellectual discussion. You can prove God exists. There's evidence for the existence of God. (laughs) God is now walking in our presence. He's walking with us. He walks among us. He carries us. He, 
He wipes away our tears. He carries our burdens on his shoulder. He who knew no sin became sin on our behalf that we might become the righteousness of God. See, God just, he, he's in our presence to tell you and me that he cares and he's here, but he sees things that you don't totally get. He sees things that you do not quite comprehend. One of them's called eternity. Eternity. What Jesus does, so he, Jesus didn't really care about Caesar Augustus 2,000 years ago. The geopolitical situation was terrible, and yes, the Roman people were in bondage, but Jesus was gunning for something higher. See, our greatest enemy is called death. Hate to break the news to you, but do you know that you're mortal? You're going to die. Your body's wearing out. Have you noticed? The laws of entropy, ent ent entropy, right? Wearing down, we're winding down, everything's winding down. Our bodies are winding down. This pump, I have a 57 year old pump right here. I got great filters in my body, they're 57 years old. Kidneys, they're all wa wearing out. Do you know what our greatest need is? Is a savior. Our greatest need is for someone to come and take away our offense before a holy God that we might dwell with God for all eternity. See, no, God gives you the lot. If God gave you the lottery today, do you think that's the be all and end all? What if you? What would you do with a billion dollars? You're still going to die. He who dies with the most toys wins. Nothing. Nothing. You can't take it with you. Do you understand? It's like. <laughs> Does our kids realize that we're saving for college? You know, they're like, I just want a toy now, Dad. Son, you don't get the big picture. Uh, you, someday, son, you're going to have to, you know, have a job and girls have cooties, Dad. I want a toy. No, son, someday, right? God sees the big picture. Jesus came for the big picture, and he came to deliver unto your life what is most important. Do I hear an amen? amen? God wants to communicate with you and communicate with me. Jesus is a sign. God's speaking to you through Jesus. Meditate on him, think on him, dwell on him. Have you ever seen someone that misses a sign? Have you ever seen someone go through a red light? Have you ever seen someone just miss it and they just went right through the red light? It's not pretty. There's usually really loud sounds when metal crushes with metal. Pieces fly, airbags deploy. It's a mess. See, signs are designed as a blessing. Uh, stop, it's, it's important. This is, well, it's not suggesting you don't debate it. You don't go, I don't really like the sign. I'm just, you, 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 if, if you see a sign and you ignore the sign, it's never really too good for you. You know, you get a spot, you got skin cancer. I'm just gonna ignore the skin cancer on my arm. That's not a great idea, right, Dr. Ball? Uh, don't, this, you do something. See, may we see the sign. And may we not ignore the sign. May we embrace the sign. I pray this Christmas that you and I would be Simeon, that we would grab Jesus and we would embrace the sign from God and we would hold him in our arms and we'd look at him and say, I'm in holding the embodiment of salvation, of my salvation. This is my savior. God, I'm embracing this sign that God is speaking to me, that he is with me and he loves me and he cares for me. He's providing for me. He's taking care of me. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. All together at the count of three. Ready? One, two, three. That's it. We're embracing it, people. We're embracing it.